What's up guys? This is Ron Parks here. Since this is my first video on YouTube, I want to introduce myself. I've spent my whole career making money for myself and my clients. And now I want to help you. I want to help you do the same with some clear advice on tracking your dream and staying motivated. I've spent the last 20 years in real estate selling over a half a billion dollars of residential and investment properties. I started my own brokerage company in San Francisco, sold it, and I'm still working as a broker with Sotheby's International Realty in San Francisco and Palm Springs. Before real estate, I was with Ernst & Young in management consulting, helping companies with bottom line productivity. My interests are varied and this channel will focus on finance, real estate, and how to think about money and wealth. I started young at 15 in business and still can't believe what I did not know when I started. I want to make these videos interesting, entertaining and relevant to what is happening in the world and in your world specifically. I want to share my ideas with you and I'm excited to start this exploration with you and look forward to your comments to make this a great channel. Have you ever asked yourself how you should think about money? We all need it. We all use it. And most of the time it flows in and out without significant thought. Managing money and accumulating wealth takes lots of thought, as well as planning. Whether you're just starting out with your first job, or you have reached the point where you have accumulated assets, thinking about money needs to be something ingrained in you, like you think about work, career, relationships, and family, or anything that has a big impact on your life. So to start, here are eight tips on how to get money motivated. Number one, Write down your financial vision. You need motivation to start adopting better money habits. And if you craft a vision board, it can help remind you to stay on track with your financial goals. A vision board could just be a worksheet, a piece of paper, a notebook, or a whiteboard. So here are some examples. I want to be financially independent in the next 10 years. I want to have my credit card debt paid off in 18 months. I want to increase my investment portfolio by 10% in two years. You can come up with many visions, but it is important to write them down and keep them fresh. Life has many changes, and so will some of these goals. Number two, set your financial goals, but use numbers and dates, not just words, to describe what you want to accomplish with your money. For example, how much debt do you want to pay off and when? How much do you want saved and by what date? A great tool for setting your goals and using financial and budgeting software, which is available online. So keeping track of all of your income and expenses is the first way to manage your financial health. A good program online, which is free to start, is called Mint.com. It's a web-based system that will let you keep track of your expenses, automatically download data from your bank and checking account, and plan a budget. It's free, but you'll get some uh, product alerts, etc., etc. It's owned by Intuit, which sells one of the most successful financial tracking apps called Quicken. If you want something a little more sophisticated, where your data is not in the cloud, but on your PC or your Mac, then look into Quicken.com. It's easy to use and has a robust budgeting system, which will compare your budget to what you're spending. It's not free, but at $49 or so a year, you'll be using it for many, many years to come and it will pay off. So keep thinking about how satisfying you will feel if you can just accomplish one of your goals in the next few weeks. It could be life changing. Number three, how do you think about money? How do you think about spending money? Do you consider yourself frugal and only spend on what you need and not what you want? Do you throw caution to the wind and buy what you want even if you go into credit card debt? Start using some positive phrases for your spending habits. For example, I'm thoughtful on spending money, or I have a goal to retire at 45, or I like to make wise purchases. Keep those phrases handy so when you're confronted with spending and a spending decision, you can say the phrase, look at it, and see if it fits into your current plan. Number four, stop living paycheck to paycheck. 
If you're living paycheck to paycheck before you do anything else, stop. Figure out where you can cut costs, even if it is by a few dollars a week. And the best way to do this is to start tracking where your money is coming from and where your money is going. That way you can make changes and set goals around your spending. That will enable you to begin saving right away without having to make more money. Number five, plan goals in bite-sized pizzas. One study showed that the further away a goal seems and the less sure we are about when it will happen, the more likely we are to give it up. So in addition to focusing on big goals, say buying a home, aim to also set smaller short-term goals along the way that will reap quicker results, like saving some money each week in order to go on a trip in six months, or putting money away in your retirement account every payday. Save money on impulse. The impulse should be to try to save money. Number six, get a money mentor. According to one study, friends with similar traits can pick up good habits from each other, and it applies to your money too. So try gathering several friends for regular money lunches, come up with some ideas, banter it around, and set a goal for yourself at those meetings. Come back the next week and see where you are. In the process, I'm sure you'll come up with great ideas. Number seven, establish a relationship with a financial professional. At some point in this journey, you'll want the benefit of a professional's advice. Perhaps it's when you have a child, you get married, or once you've accumulated a small pool of assets, or when you're ready to buy a house, for example. When the time is right, find the right planner for some of the financial complexities of your life. Make the planner be your partner. And number eight, max out on all your company benefits. Remember the office? the one that you used to commute to? Well, HR is still working and they're working away hard, but are you making the most of your employee benefits? Find out if your company offers tuition reimbursement, student loan relief, disability insurance, financial savings accounts for healthcare, dental care, etc., or even pet insurance. Take advantage of those benefits that make sense for you, especially the ones that do not require a financial outlay on your part. Some employers help workers transition into retirement and offer benefits such as financial coaching and the ability to move to part-time work or a flexible schedule. Another benefit available to older workers is the ability to make catch-up contributions in the workplace to savings plans such as IRAs or 401k. For 2020, the IRS allows workers over the age of 50 to add an extra $6,500 to their workplace plan like a 401k. And if you have an IRA, they allow you to add an extra $1,000. So I hope these ideas will percolate and we'll have an opportunity to revisit them as we move along. If you like the video, please punch the like button, subscribe, and I'll be back twice a week with some new videos on some interesting topics. And thanks for your time.